G'day everyone. Now, isn't this a glorious day? A beautiful spring day. I hope you're all well and looking after one another at this time. Our acknowledgement of country. We acknowledge that we are on the land of the Ghana people, the traditional custodians of the Adelaide Plains. We are awed that they celebrate the religious significance of place, plant and all living creatures and that care for the earth is implanted in their law. We honour them and also delight in the sacred in our midst. We pray that in the power of the Holy Spirit we might work together for reconciliation and justice in this land. Our call to worship. We invite country to worship with us. Wildflowers and mysterious mushrooms. Swirling grasses and golden wattle. We join the land as it trembles before God. With tremors and earthquakes, whirlwinds and volcanoes. We invite the farmlands to sing with us. Wheat fields, orchards and vineyards. Red gums, gardens and wetlands. We join with all the fauna of the fields in praising God. Kangaroos, emus and bandicoots, echidnas, eagles and magpies. We invite the ground to stir deep below. Life-giving microbes restoring the soil. Beetles and worms preparing our food. We celebrate the song of the soil. Let us worship our creator. When you think of land, what comes to mind? I'm now speaking as a second people's person, as these next views on land are not views of First Nations people. Their relationship to land or country, we can usually only glimpse. When we think of land, it's hard not to think of it other than being a commodity, something to be bought and sold. Our economy is built upon such trade. It is also a depository of other things we need, metals and minerals, rocks to dig up, get crushed and be processed or land as a container, storing things like oil and gas that we drill for and extract. We grow our food on it. We also build our shelters upon it. But land has other reasons, like land is also a place of beauty, something which I really enjoy photographing, drawing and occasionally painting. These are all ways land or earth is understood as a commodity. That's not to say that th those views are either bad or good. It's just one way of understanding the land. What if we were to view land in another way altogether? Land as a character in a story, your story, our story, humanity's story. Land is a witness, friend, supporter, victim, protector or healer. In almost every story land is present but overlooked, taken for granted or even forgotten. Listen to scripture wondering where could land be. This scripture is a psalm, the lyrics of a song. Psalm 139 verses 7 to 14. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in shoal, you are there. If I take the wings 
of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea. Even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm in a sentence, God knows me and is with me. Let's dig a little deeper. When we listen to the psalm with our minds on the earth, on the land, what could we see? Let's start with the first verse. Where can I go from your presence? A vision of our grounding in the land. Land all around. Our feet firmly planted, anchored in the land. Land from where God has built all things. Or land like an ever-present character in our story. A witness Friend, supporter, victim, protector, healer, always there, never far away, often with a different role, but a role to play always. In one of the last verses, we hear it say of being knitted in a mother's womb. We could recognise that the earth is a kind of womb, a, a, a place of birth, a place of nurture. This is an image of land as, as mother. There is more to this. Last week, we heard the second creation story from the Bible in Je Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 to 10. A human formed out of the soil in the Garden of Eden. I was deliberate in not naming the creature Adam or man. You may have noticed that. At the time, I didn't plan to go into it in great detail, but I will now. Usually we have the Hebrew word translated to Adam rather than the correct Adham which means human. The word Adam comes from the word Adama, meaning earth. The human comes from the earth, from the land. This is an earth creature. Gender for this earth human did not arrive until the removal of that rib, when male and female were created in one action. This second creation story is understood to be older than the seven days of creation from chapter one in Genesis. We are from the land. The land is understood as our mother. Now we arrive at an understanding of land more akin to the first peoples, their understanding of land. If we hold this understanding of land as mother rather than as a commodity, it changes our relationship. What does this mean for us today? in the era of species extinctions and climate crisis? 
Or, if we know land as a character in our story, what does land feel as it witnesses what we do? Waste dumps and fields of war, the rainforests being cut down and the wetlands we drain. The land surely knows that some bear much more suffering than others. What does the mercy of the land look like today? What would a truly just and repaired relationship look like with the land? What does the healing and mercy of the land mean for us today and teach us as we learn the gift of healing the world. An image of such a gift is mentioned in the Garden of Eden, the Tree of Life. Its other appearance in the final book of Revelation, in there we hear the Tree of Life's leaves are for the healing of the nations. Rest with that image as we pray. Let us pray. Creator God, we come before you today as creatures of the land you created. Earth, our home, cares for us and witnesses to our actions as you do. We pray to be grounded and guided as people who are earthly and joyful, practicing our oneness with the earth. Amen. We will now spend some time with earth in our mind and enter a time of prayer. Pause the video as long as you need and enter a time of personal prayer or prayer with those who have gathered with you. Prayers for the people, situations around the world, our earth, our nation, for family and friends. When ready, play the video again and we will conclude with a prayer and a blessing. Let us pray. A prayer. Let us pray. God, our Creator, we celebrate your vibrant presence amongst us and our kin in creation, especially in the soil, the fields and the land. Help us to empathise with your creatures who are suffering. Lift our spirits to rejoice with the land, the flowers of the field and all the creatures of the countryside. In the name of Christ, who reconciles and renews all things in creation, Amen. Our blessing. May the Spirit of God, who is above all and in all and through all, fill you with the knowledge of God's presence in earth and the warm warming of Christ within you. Go in peace, serving Christ and loving earth. We go in peace, serving Christ and tending earth this day and forevermore. Amen.